Back to the Booga Box live stream. It's Wednesday, small project night. Uh, we're going to be actually working on a Dragon Scale weave bracelet. Uh, I've done them before, uh, but I've only got one or two left in stock, so I figured I was going to do up some more. I was working on another one earlier, but I ran out of larger rings, so that's as far as we got on it right now. Uh, might have to order some bigger rings for that. So, got some other colors that I had plenty of. Figured I'm gonna do this one. I'm gonna do one more uh, later tonight. So that's what we'll be working on tonight. Oh, come on. I'm trying to make sure all my stuff's here correctly. Try to give myself a little time beforehand to do all that, but. Didn't really get it done tonight. <laughs> it was running a little short, so I think everything's going now and everything's looking good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting into it. But uh, Dragon Scale Weave is pretty simple weave overall. Um, it's just a time consumer and a ring hog. So I make up a few, I try to have a few on hand so people can see them, and I've done a special orders on them. So. For the colors that somebody might want but it's a neat looking weave like i said this one's a little bit wider this one's one one ring wider i guess so uh, this one goes three and two this one goes four and three so it's a little bit fatter on that one so i want one skinnier on this one just to play it good let me go ahead and get started on it here uh, So, yeah, I'm just trying to, like I said, I wanted to get one, two, four the, more for the event that we got coming up, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. If you're local, it'll be down in Smithville, Missouri at their main downtown square uh, by Smithville Lake. Uh, so that's going to actually be our first one of the year. And uh, This week, I figure, is what I'm going to try to do is get some rest of this and this weekend finish up any more projects I really want to work on and then next week the only time I'll actually be working on chain mail will probably be during the stream because I'll uh, the rest of the time I'm going to be working on getting everything settled and ready for the event itself uh, I still got a few things to get set up and then just to verify I got everything since it's been so long I want to kind of make sure <laughs> Make sure that I get everything kind of where I need it and all that good stuff. So, come on, get tucked up under there. These you got to kind of make sure they get tucked up before you get too far along in it, or they'll kind of come out of place. And they can get back into place, but it's kind of tight. They hold into place very well most of the time. So, hopefully, everybody had a good week so far. Hope you're having a good Wednesday. Hope you join us at some point tonight too. If not, you're watching us later. That's all good too. And don't forget, you know, give us likes, give us shares. Uh, you can find us over on Twitch and YouTube. Uh, if you got accounts over there, find us, give us likes and uh, subscribe and all that good stuff. Uh, the more the merrier. Probably have to let the cats out here now they hear me talking they're up and active now all right so on to these three well, like i said it's a fairly simple weave overall just a little bit of a time consumer and definitely a ring hog because you're kind of using you know depending i mean it's not super bad i guess but you know compared to some weaves it use a lot more and, to other weaves it uses just some more 
three on this one. Hey, I want to get this done. Uh, oh man, what up with the tie? I ended up getting the tie done from uh, the other night. I guess I can grab it here when we get near the end. I'll show that. I put it over to the side and uh, ended up getting the clip in. I ended up actually using the attachments that the, the holes I had to attach it to, and it worked out fairly well. So I was pretty happy with it overall. It came out pretty pretty well. Uh, for a first time trying one of those with the clips and uh, tomorrow we will actually be starting on the checkerboard, chessboard uh, got all the rings cut up they're all clean and ready to go if you missed Monday I don't think I really showed them on Monday but over the weekend I think I did post a picture of them saying you know got, a, got them all cut up, coiled and cleaned and they're ready to start weaving I was gonna try to get into some of it yesterday uh, but again I was just going through stuff trying to make sure I have everything ready for the ne this next event and been, it's been a while since we've had events <laughs> kind of double triple checking at least it's a close event if I do have something I need to grab I can run back real quick to get it but I prefer not to so and yeah, there's I mean you, don't really think about it but there's a lot that goes into doing an event really I mean everything you got to take make sure you've got to be able to pretty much do anything you need to do while you're at the event <laughs> uh, why did I add those on there I do not know why I added those on there talking and forgetting now I gotta find my closure As soon as I put on that second one, I was like, these aren't the I don't need these. Goes on the three pack. So again, I hope everybody's having a good good Wednesday, good week. Starting to warm up here in the Kansas City area, which kinda eh, it's not bad, but not looking forward to being in the heat on our event. They're talking about ninety-two possibility of rain, to rain, which kind of kind of sucks in a way, but hopefully it doesn't turn out too bad. We'll see how it goes. I mean, that's what happens with outdoor events, though. As long as it's not a bad rain and it's just little bits, it's okay. Uh, I know one of the last times we had a rain event, it just stormed like crazy. And uh, I actually had my boxes and stuff that are under my table were starting to float away. We got so much rain. <laughs> And since then, all the other indoor events had been canceled. And looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. I'll be ready to get back out there, start showing off all the new things that we've gotten, that we've worked on over the past year. I mean, some of that time we didn't do a lot, but you know, never take, taken any of my etching. Uh, stuff you know and showed off the the led lights or the the uh tumblers and stuff yet i probably need to work up a cutting board i'm hoping to get some little bit of laser etching done on friday uh to try to you know show off everything i've done everything and got many things for everything but most of it has sold so i don't really have anything to take along for show per se you need to get on the other side. All right. But I'm going to have so much more stuff, too. I'm going to have to... It'll be an interesting setup, for sure. That's the wrong ones. Since, uh... We haven't done a setup with any of the laser edge stuff before. And now, just having so much more stuff, I'm actually going to be... Uh, I keep talking about it, and I still haven't done it. I got the wood for it, but uh, tomorrow I'm going to get it in and work on the, the uh, stand for the Mahomes jersey so that I can have something for it to sit on <laughs> at the event. And then just everything else will kind of be played by ear. I was wanting to get a pre-set up done beforehand, but... I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, I've set up several different ways, so I got a basic idea, but 
there will be some minor changes to the setup to try to accommodate everything. I know the time before last event there was a few things I didn't like about that setup using some uh, uh, we had uh, all of those little square cr metal crate type things. And I thought it was going to help on some things but it ended up being just they take forever to kind of put together and our setup is already takes some time with so much stuff. I mean, it literally takes us two hours to set up without, if not having any issues. I would like to cut that time down, but, you know, it is what it is. When you got a lot of stuff to get up. And... But we're going to try to have everything there, so if you get a chance and can swing by and check it out, that'd be great down there in Smithville. Uh, you got things for the kids to do. There'll be several crafters there. Many crafters. Uh, and they also have uh, music and stuff. So, it's kind of a fun event. And we've been doing it pretty much every year, other than last year. Uh, since I kind of started up the business and selling, that was actually our first event we ever did was down there, because it was close easy to get to <laughs> and it's a free event for people to come uh, you can just come down check things out no entry fee to get into the event or anything you can just kind of wander around check out stuff listen to some music uh, they got some kids inflatable type slides and bouncy house things they normally set up down there so you can come by if you got kids and have them kind of play and check that out too Still don't have any dates lined up after that yet. Uh, there's some that I want to do. It's just a matter of making sure that they're going to be open to do. Uh, some of them haven't made up their minds yet. Then we always have our fall ones. We got those lined up for November and December. We're going to have at least two to four. It depends. I know for sure we got two already lined up. And I'm hoping to get two more lined up in there too. It just kind of depends with everything going on. Uh, one, one of these days we're going to be doing the Renaissance Festival. Was two years ago I was wanting to start to try to look into getting into doing our local Renaissance Festival. Uh, it's definitely not an easy thing to get into per se. Because there's already a lot of chain millers there. <laughs> so they don't want to overload. But we're going to try to work on getting into those. Trying to do, you know... Not the, every week there, but at least a weekend or two. Something that I'd like to do anyway. Because, you know, that's kind of what this is more related to, even though... I just, I like doing the other events, just because, you know, people don't know about chain mail. And you get out to other events, and they're like, oh, like Renaissance Festival style stuff. And it's like, yeah. I mean, the weaves are, but I mean, it's not... That, I mean, you can do full suit, suits and all that, but it doesn't have to be, you know, all Renaissance related that's why I mean most of the stuff here most people don't realize it's chain mail uh, they might now that I'll have the uh, big chief's jersey there and realize okay chain mail uh, this is all chain mail so that'll be kind of interesting to see but most people are like what is this this chain mail renaissance style you know but more modern stuff and prettier since, uh, you know, normally that's kind of steel stuff, per se. and We still have stainless steel stuff that we, we do do. But... Well, let me get a quick check here. Since we're about 15 minutes in, everything looking good. I don't see any comments yet, but it's all good, too. Like I said, I just kind of like having fun doing this. And people show up and want to engage that's great if not you know just stop by watch it watch the video later whatever you want to do I just try to have fun with it still got some things I want to try to change up here at some point but right now like I said getting ready for this event being the first event in a while kind of taking a little more time into that right now just to when you start getting into events and you got everything kind of prepared you know if you go out once a month to an event kind of got your stuff ready and it's just there already but being so long now we got the trailer it's 
it'll be a new experience for sure. And then, like I said, I've had a lot of people come through at our at our place to uh, you know, that are local that that wanted something. So there's a lot of stuff that's pulled out, so people could look at stuff and all that. And I've just never really put it back up into packed it properly for going to an event. So that I'll have to do get that all taken care of. a little bit of time plus I've got like I said I've got quite a bit of new stuff I gotta get labeled tagged and all that I still got actually a couple little laser tag pieces I need to get done too to add to I normally put a little etched aluminum card on my bigger thing so they with all the stats you know how long it took how many rings are in it and a price obviously but Plus, I mean, after so many years and so many things, I kind of forget sometimes how, what some project did take. You know, I've still got a wall clock that I made four, you know, five years ago now. Uh, I always have to remind myself how long it actually took. Is <laughs> I've just had it for a while, so I'm not. I don't quite remember its full stats. That, you know, after so many years. Now I do have my books that tell me, and I can look it up. I normally do take my my notebooks with me, so I can kind of flip through it if I need to, but I also need to update my uh, past book, my, I call it the past book, but it's, just, it's a notebook that I use that I put in uh, pictures of custom pieces uh, and stuff like that, I have pictures and everything, so you can see everything that we've pretty much done through the years, I try to keep everything in stock that I normally do, but some of the bigger things, you know, you don't always just keep those in stock, so... I need to get a get that updated. I need to print out some more pictures for that. I need to do the cheese flag. I need to add that to it that uh, Vicky got because uh, you know it was awesome. I love doing it and I want to show it off. But it, since you know it's not mine, <laughs> I can't take it with me to an event. So that's one of those things that I'll add to the to the past book. So I need to pull that out and update it too. Like I said, I've got quite a bit of things I need to kind of get worked up on and updated. I've been trying to slowly do it. And like usual, just never enough time. Try to add it into the, the funness of everything else for the week, but never enough time to keep everything up. Just with everything else that we got to do around the house and all that good stuff. We'll see here. I'm not sure exactly how long I need to make this to get me to my 8 inches. So it'll be a trial. If I uh, get it on there, I might have to take it apart and add on another row or two. It just kind of depends. Could be a little longer. Mostly that's what I've been doing here lately is I end up getting a little longer than I want. But again, I'd rather it be longer. Eh. Then it's too short because it's a lot easier to take it apart and take out parts to, to uh, custom fit it to somebody in a, at an event than it is to try to build it at an event. That's what I, I used to have just a variety of different sizes, so I had some smaller and larger, and people were like, I like this one, I, I like the color, but it needs to be bigger. And I'd take the stuff, and I'll have that same stuff where I could do it, but I noticed after a while it was just a lot easier to just make everything at 8 inches, and uh, it's easier to pull it apart. You know, sometimes I still need to go larger, and a lot of those times I will we'll just set up a custom order for it anyway. So, kind of how we do those. Like I said, though, I do take I take quite a bit of rings with me, so I can do adjustments. Uh, got a lot more rings now. That's one other thing I need to kind of update is kind of make sure I've got a supply, of, a decent enough supply. I mean, I can't build everything at an event, but I do plan on. Uh, Working on the jelly cube though at this event just so I can continue getting it to grow. It's always a good time to work on something in an event so people can kind of see the process. And I normally take a coil or two with me and show how, you know, a coil 
is I'd like to be able to take the stuff where I could coil at an event, but it can get a little loud and, uh, you know, it could possibly cut at an event too, but gives them the basic idea of, you know, you take your wire like this and I have straight pieces of wire and uh, just show that you coil it up here and then you cut them and then you start weaving them to get a big old pile. Hopefully I'm in this other screen. I think I'm probably a little too high. I'm always a little high on that screen. I'm trying to get it down and keep it further back. And like I said, that's one of the things I kind of want to change up is how I'm doing the video. I've got a few other things I need to 3D print that I've designed up, just haven't got them yet. Again, with time. And right now, I'm working with all the band stuff, getting all that stuff updated. I've got at least another two hours of work tonight to actually do on band stuff tonight, too. So, uh, yeah, okay. I'll make sure I had them right. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I got a lot of the band stuff done the other day, but this week got a few more things since band camp starts next week. Kind of want to make sure we get everything going good. Uh, this is the two. Okay, so yeah, I need to still put those in. That's what I was. I was like, I missed something here. Took me a second to realize it. Because, I mean, you can put these rings in after you put in the bigger ones for the next row. But I just found it easier this way. Then I don't have to try to get them to tuck up under as much. Because sometimes that can be a little bit of a booger when, when I do them this way. They're kind of flimsy and I can make sure they go into place before I put it in that top ring. Instead of trying to force them into their spot the next round. Just one of those little things that I figured done because uh, when I first did them I did it the other way and it definitely took a lot longer to do it that way and then when I found out you know it's just looking at it going I should put these in first before I go to the next and it definitely definitely helped time wise getting them done and just a little bit easier overall anyway didn't have to worry like I said so much about tucking rings in they were kind of already in place so Let's see here, that's the two, except this one got on the wrong side, can we... Hey guys! Stop! And that's what happens when I start talking, they both wake up and start problems, right? He loves to pick on her. Alright, yeah, I'm going to have to pull that one back out. So that's what happened is that ring got in front of this ring. So, where's my closure? I thought I had it in front the right way before I put that through, but I obviously didn't. <laughs> or it would have been fine. There we go. Just a matter of a little slip there, and that's what's nice about it. Once you do get it locked into place, normally you don't have a problem with it, but that would have been a lot harder to fix later on. And so then we do the three. All right, try to get more down in here. Right, right up under here would be nice. I think I um, thought about trying to bring it more over, but I didn't want it to block my upper cam. So I might come in at an angle from the other side here and try to get it to work that way. But again, after the event, I am going to try to do some changing and, and different mock-up setting. And uh, One day I'd like to set up the other side where I can place items for easier showing and I have been contemplating more and more about having a head cam, if you want to call it that, a face shot of while I'm working. I didn't really want to in a way, but, you know, 
I have had a few not necessarily ask but just wonder why I don't <laughs> I'm like well I don't really want to look at my ugly mug either so but we might end up doing that too there's some things that I need to test for doing that and make sure I got the camera to work and set up right plus I will be using these cameras a lot more often because of the band season coming up so I'll have to be taking them down and putting them up a lot more than I would normally do uh, just because we'll I'll be using them quite often for the events and Tuesday night practices whenever they they want to get some video of what they how they practice that night you know I always tell the band director if you want any extra video just let me know I'm there so whenever I can and get the drone up get the drone video Takes a little bit to get the drone video to line up with the other videos and get audio because you don't obviously get audio from a drone. All you'd hear is whacking. Oh, that's something here. Evening coil and 16G tonight. What are you working on tonight? Hey, John. Good to see you. That's John. Uh, I'm working on the Dragon Scale bracelet right now. It's kind of a simple Dragon Scale. I've only got two left in stock for the event, so I figured I want to get a couple more done in the in brighter colors. The other ones I got are more dark colors, so I don't have a whole lot. Normally don't take a whole lot of dragon scale with me, but I hadn't done it in a while. So I was like, yeah, I need to get a couple done. So that's what we are working on tonight. I love doing it. It's not a hard weave, but it's just the ring hog. It likes to suck up rings left and right. Drinks them. Hope you're having a good night tonight. I love going up to 16s. G. That's about the max I would try to use my drill to do my, my drill uh, coiling. Is about 16 G. I'd probably go higher with aluminum, but uh, I burn up another drill here, uh, coiling up the bronze this last weekend. It's still working, but yeah, she was smoking. <laughs> I guess I did a little bit of stainless steel. I got some, uh, what did I do? Five sixteenths of uh, some stainless, too. I didn't end up getting those cut up because I didn't necessarily have a plan for it, but I went ahead and coiled them up and have them ready to do. Just need to get me a heavy duty or drill, I guess. I've gone through two through the years, which really, I guess, isn't too bad considering how much I've coiled up. Max I do is 16G four foot coils. Max I do is 308 stainless. Yeah. No, yeah, especially with a drill. I mean,. Yeah, I'd have to have a really torquey drill to do anything really bigger than that on for stainless. And no, I thought the bronze was actually going to be softer than it was. <laughs> it was definitely a lot thicker and harder than I was imagining it compared to the to the uh, brass that I had. It's it's pretty easy to work with, I guess per se, compared to the bronze. I was I wasn't expecting that big of a difference because uh, I'd never actually done my own bronze before. I've done brass from on my own before, but I hadn't done bronze, so I was kind of surprised with that when I was doing it. And I was like, I wasn't expecting it to be that tough, but it all worked out good, though. Other than the drill, and like I said, it's still kicking, but it definitely kind of struggled. <laughs> 12G, the mandrel just spins. Uh, I can see that. That's why most mine anymore. I make sure I get a keyed chuck one, uh, just because it they seem to work better for me anyway. The uh, chuckless or the keyless chucks just don't hold as tight when you're trying to do metal. 
That was the first one I tried. I actually ended up pulling it off, and I just use it as a normal drill now. Because I was like, this ain't going to work, so. Now I do have a, a chuckless one in key uh, for my ringinator. That, you know, it's got, it holds well for that. I hadn't had a problem, but for coiling, again, I haven't tried any 12G. Uh, but I'd imagine it would have some issues, and I would think it would work better with a keyed chuck, but some I haven't tried yet. I do want to get some, uh, I do actually want to get some 12 gauge and some 14 gauge because I, I need some 14 gauge 7 16 That's what I, I keep having to buy them, and it's like I just need to make my own, unless I want colored stuff, but. For what I've been working on, I'd rather just use bright aluminum for what I'm currently working on. So, my hand crank 12G or thicker works less defects, no chance of drill over spinning and damage me like a quick drill pull. Yeah. Yeah, you do have to be a little careful with the drill. I mean, it still works okay, but yeah. When those things get out of control, you can get, you know. It can get a little dangerous, that's for sure. And I, whenever it comes to, I normally hand will hand coil my silver, my, my sterling. Still haven't got. I know you need to get some of the argentium. I think I got it right that time, maybe. <laughs> uh, wire so I can coil up some of that. I've got some fine, fine silver that I still need to get some coiled up, but I normally hand coil all that and I, and I coil them up in. Uh, about eight inch coils just to you know depending on how I guess how much I actually have I kind of divide it out so that I can even out my coil so I don't get one coil that's super short or anything and uh, then I always have to have a extra little bit that I coil up in aluminum for the ringinator anyway but uh, most time when I've done my silver I've actually used my Pepe tool cutter uh, when it comes to my silver it's quick a little bit more of a setup than than I would care for for when I'm doing smaller amounts but when you're using the fine materials like that I try to missed out on TRL 30 60 pound 12g uh, that would have been sweet to get yeah I, I'm attached to that group but I never really get any uh, notifications on that I guess I need to go through there and set up notifications so I get them because only time I see anything there is when I actually go to the page. But again, I don't do I want to deal with the headache of the way they do ordering for that stuff. Here lately it's just been ugh, I need to make another order, but it's, I'm hesitant right now just because the last several orders have given me so many problems. I hate saying that, but um, let's see here, one, two, a three. I guess I should measure out how long we actually here. I know we're nowhere near eight yet, but eh, like I was saying just a little bit ago, tomorrow night I'm gonna finally start in on the checkerboard, chessboard. Got everything I need for it finally done, and it'll definitely take a little bit of time. Especially, like I said, this next week I'm not going to really work on any chain mail other than the live stream times because just getting set up for the event. Want to make sure I get everything going for it. And otherwise, I'll start disappearing hours because I can sit down, and next thing you know, it's like four or five hours have passed. It's like, uh, okay, I know I got up a couple times to do stuff. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Let me give us a quick measurement here. We're just about a little over five. Probably be more at five and a half by the time I had a clasp on, so. I got a free 50 pound 24G stainless spool as a whoopsie by them. Well, that would have been sweet. I never get oopsies. I always get <laughs> screwed in a way. Wrong size rings, 
That was in the order before. Uh, which you know, wasn't that big of a deal. It was like, I'll still use them, but, you know, it just meant on the next order I had to add on more of what I actually needed <laughs> or wanted. I'm trying to think, yeah, I don't think I've ever gotten a whoopsie. Most time I get exactly what I, I ordered, but there have been a few times where they, they've missed things and they're like, there's no way we could miss it. We weigh them out. And I'm like, I know the one time was it two, two years ago or so. I had to email them telling me they didn't get my stuff, and they're like, "You got a cat that'll grab me?" I was like, "Yeah, I have cats, but when I come to checking in on my stuff, you know, I lay out at my table and I go through it two, three times. Cats are not allowed around when I do that, so that you know, they don't really play with them anyway. I try to give them one to see what they would do with it, so I knew if maybe they would. And they just looked at it like, "Why'd you throw that down?" <laughs> How do you whoops on a 50 pound spool? Yeah. But that would be a nice whoops. If anything, I think I get whoops on the low side. Like I said, there's been some times when I was ordering the uh, Color 12G rings that I've been getting. Uh, half inch, so I can do some of the bigger uh, crosses that I do. Uh, all my silver and one other color I, I should have measured them out before I, I put them in my storage area, my storage containers because I, I know there was something wrong with them, I was like that because my other colors with the silver, and I, it might have been green uh, it was filling up my tube overfill, overfull and I'm like, that just doesn't happen and so I think that's probably the only two things I've ever got that was on the good side of a whoopsie. I think their their weighing machine must have been miscalculated. <laughs> and there's been a lot of times where they say approximate rings, and I always hope they will give you a little more than the approximate. But it's about 90% of the time I'm about 10 rings shy of their approximate. And so now I just really don't even count them anymore because it just kind of irks me. I wish they'd just lower that down to say approximately five less than that and then I'd be okay. <laughs> but that's another reason why I'm kind of looking at other manufacturers right now. I wish others had some shiny aluminum. I think that's the only thing that really stopped me from totally changing over. Now that I'm starting to work with some more of the matte colors, I will be probably getting more of that from other places. Because I'm kind of kind of digging it in a way. But yeah, I wish. Well, and that was like the uh, five pounds of bronze that I just got from them. They put it on a bigger bigger spool, I guess. And but I, you know. No way to take it off the spool so I could measure the weight of it. The only way I know is I weighed it before. And uh, I started coiling up any of the bronze. And then I'm going to weigh the spool afterwards and see if it comes up right. Because I've got, I made four pounds of it. And I know there's not another pound left on the, that spool. There's just not, I don't, you know, I could be wrong. I, I could be wrong. It doesn't seem like there's going to be another pound left on that spool. So I'm afraid I got a little shorted on that too. But we'll see. I don't want to say anything bad yet until I know for sure, but that's the only way I need. No, but I figured I was going to uh, do some more coiling up with what was left. I'm going to do some 3 16 inch uh, 16G bronze. Coil the rest of it up in that size. Give me some, uh, I'm going to mix it up with some stainless steel and do some benzentine with it. I always guess them at 10% bad rings from every ring order. That is true. I do, I do kind of calculate some of that in, but it's still, you know. Normally, you know, if they say 300, I get 295-ish. I'll probably have another 10 that were bad rings in there. And then sometimes you get, those are bad rings that were almost still usable, but there's either a nick in it or something. Then, then you always end up with, you know, 
three or four half chunks from, from cutting on a coil. And where are we at here? So I do try to make sure I account for that whenever I do my thing. If, you know, if I need 900 of a ring and they say approximately 300, I always get four. Four bags worth, give me 1,200 just to play it extra. That's why I've got so much extra of the, uh, and why I'm using these right now, uh, of the dark rose, just because I know we're doing here. That they're always going to be a little short, so I ended up getting, I, I had, I put in two extra, three extra bags on this last order of, of it, just to play it safe. And I was like, well, I got enough of these, I'll go ahead and use them. I always have to account for bad counts. <laughs> now I noticed it depends on who you go through. Uh, I did the first two times I got some of, you know, I don't do it anymore because I just make my own anymore. But when I first started ordering rings instead of just making up out of crap wire, uh, Chainmail Joe's, you know, and I'd buy a pound at a time there and it says approximately. and. His was, I mean, you're buying a pound, so it's a little different, but when I'd weigh it, it was always over, and then when I went to actually count them out, you know, I'd count out 6,200 rings, and I'd end up with 6,500 or something like that, you know, which was nice. Uh, come on, how did you get, there we go. Back to where you need to be there, ring. And, uh, oh, who did I just get some of these other ones from? Oh, where'd that box go? Oh, I didn't put a thing on it? Huh. I did get some. I can't remember who, who that last order from the other place. I got it from now. Right off my head. I order from so many different places sometimes I get confused on who I've gotten stuff from, what I got from who. <laughs> I gotta get order you gotta order more black and 14 g rings yeah i want to i still haven't gotten any of the black and rings from anybody yet uh, i know there's a couple different places out there people but i still haven't gotten any myself i do want to and it's like i, I was sending that message last night there are so many things i want to do and uh order from and, and certain weaves that I just still don't think in my lifetime I'll be able to finish everything that I actually want to do. I got a few kits from uh, certain people for odder things, uh, you know, from Steampunk Garage and stuff that I still haven't sat down and done yet. No, they would be kind of simple. It's like, well, those I didn't necessarily plan on selling, per se. So, they kind of get definitely put off longer, too. I've got a dragonfly kit on somebody that's that I got from somebody. Like I said, I try to support some of the other mailers out there when, when they got kits for weirder, not necessarily weirder, but just different things. I'll try to get them just to help them out. And plus, I just kind of want to do it, too. But then I just never do, because... Again, those are things I planned on just kind of doing for myself, and I always put off stuff for myself. <laughs> I used to do a lot and, and stuff for the wife, too. I've definitely done a lot less for the wife here lately, but, I mean, she's got two earring stands up there full of earrings and bracelets and necklaces and <laughs> ungodly amounts of stuff. I actually haven't done a whole lot for her lately. And most of the time I end up getting fine silver for that anyway. She's more into the silver than gold. So I just work with fine silver and weld those up for her. And it's been probably a good year and a half since I've actually done anything just for her too. So In 30 years of making mail, I've only bought one piece of chain mail from another mailer. Really? Yeah, I mean... I can see why. I mean, oops. Uh, but I, you know, when it comes to the kits and stuff people put out there, I try to support them as much as I can because they're cool and everything. So I try to support them. If I go to like the Renaissance Festival, I will normally get a little something from uh, a few of them just to you know, support them along. I'd rather, you know, 
them be able to still continue and do their thing so well plus one of them is it was the, the one that got me into the chain mail 20 some odd years ago when I was 21 20 I guess I was 20 21 uh, never really there wasn't really a business he was doing he was just kind of doing it out in the middle of nowhere type thing but then uh, since I've gone back you know there I had uh, a place and that's what kind of got me hooked again to try it as a business and uh, so I always try to get a little something from her booth and I don't get anything necessarily huge per se but you know I try to support as many people as I can I've gotten stuff from Joshua and uh, uh, Lisa Ellis I've gotten some of her things Who else have I gotten on there? Who was it that did the... Oh, that was Lisa too, so that would have been another thing I got from Lisa. I'm trying to remember the other one. It's personal interaction reactions and courteous nature that always have been bad luck and negative. Oh, a jelly cube I got offline as a splurge 20. Wow, that's pretty good. I mean, how big was it a jelly cube though, I guess? Because they're definitely not going to be cheap with the time it takes, depending on the size. The smaller it is, you know, obviously it'll be a little quicker and easier and cheaper, but... Oh, dang cats, open the door again. i have to go close that. It's just too hot out there today. Though it is warm or cooling down now. That it's getting a little later in the day. It's worth way more. I was kind of wondering, I was like... You know, five by five takes me a good three hours, <laughs> and so I'm like, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm looking at you know forty five to fifty five ish on just that, and it's not all that big. Oh, let me close this door. <laughs> They're both out there. I have to peek out when I close the door. <laughs> And they're out there just sprawled out on the back concrete. It looks like I'm trying to dry turkey jerky or something. It's like I got turkey jerky cats going on out there. They're both laid out the same way. Brass, bronze, copper, silver, plated, copper, king, 5x5x5. Five by five by five. Yeah. I mean, it depends on the, the plated. I hate using plated stuff. I just never have good luck with it. The more you play with it, you know, the easier it starts wearing down. I mean, I, I don't... I haven't tested them all out, but there are some that are better than others, obviously. But in King would mean it was bigger rings to begin with, so it'd probably be a little quicker to work with because the smaller rings are a little harder to get in there and work with. Not hard, but... Oh, I had to get a drink real quick. Back down where you belong. It's made of five metals for a $20 jelly cube. It's still, still cheap. I'm sure it still did take some time. And being king, it might have actually taken a little bit longer. But bigger rings kind of bring that time down a bit, at least for me. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I try to support them if I can. Uh, there have been some times I haven't been able to buy stuff and sometimes I like some of their stuff that, that's the higher price that I'd love to get but you know at the time just didn't have the cash for it because you know I'm spending most of my money on trying to buy supplies for my own business yeah, I bought like I said a bunch of tutorials I bought and there's many of them that I still haven't even done and most of them that I have bought too that I figured them out before I even needed the tutorial but it's like it was their their baby, you know. If I'm going to make it and sell it, even though I figured it out on my own, I'd still like to support them. I've done that with a lot of West Coast uh, chain mail, uh, steampunk garage. I've gotten quite a few of, of Jennifer's stuff that I figured out on my own, but, you know, still feel more comfortable and giving them a little love, you know. 
I've actually probably got three or four that I've never even looked at yet. <laughs> that I actually haven't done and figured out on my own. I just haven't opened them up, haven't looked at the picture, tried to figure it out. I just, I got them, and they're just there. It's like, you know. Might be a little weird, but I'd rather, you know, people want to stay in the, in the business and keep them going. Uh, let's see, we're on to a two. One point three five inch cube. Uh, I'm wondering how big my cube was. And I'm thinking it probably, yeah, yeah, it's probably roughly about the same size, I guess. Except for the square ring one I did, the five five thirty second square sixteen or eighteen uh, G cubes. They were a little bit bigger using the same amount of rings, but it was bigger overall just because they were bigger rings. But it worked out well being square. Uh, okay, where's I at here? <laughs> I was losing track of where I'm at. Do that more with the stream than I do when I'm working. But when I was working on the other one today, I was I started that this morning and then I ran out of rings, so but I was working with it in my lap. It went together a lot quicker. <laughs> then when I started on this one, I just tried to when I first started it today, I was like, I need to do it more in front of the camera and try to get used to having the camera again. And I'm still off. I can't seem to stay up in this thing. Lots of silver stuff I love. Yeah. Yeah, I see. There's not a lot. Uh, most of the stuff, most of the mailers at my, my local Renaissance Festival, they're working with uh, mostly galvanized steel that kind of just drives me a little bonkers. But, I mean, I get what, what they're doing and stuff. But... Uh, one of the others, Amanda, she does a lot of aluminum work, not much really into any stainless steel or uh, any other metals for the most part. Uh, that's one reason why I want to go, because I really want to start getting some. There used to be one that was really a really nice place. Uh, and I don't know their names because they were kind of difficult to talk to, which kind of sucked in a way. Uh, but they haven't been there the last few years, which I don't know if it was because people just got, you know, their prices were pretty high, but it was stainless steel, titanium stuff, anodized titanium, so I mean, I expect it to be that way. They had all kinds of signs, no pictures, you know, and things like that, and I get that, you know, I don't care if people want to take pictures of my stuff, you know. If you want to try to do it on your own, be my guest. You know, you always have those people who's like, oh, I could do that myself cheaper. Yeah, but do you want to take the time? Is it going to be your business? Then it's a little different. But they were, you know, I wanted to chat with them more, and I tried to chat with them for the two years. Uh, the last two years they were there before I noticed they weren't there the next year. The last two, they were there. The last two years they weren't there, and before that it was two years that I was trying to. But they were very difficult to talk with, and that was kind of a bummer. Because uh, uh, they had some good stuff that I did like. Uh, let's see here, we're on to the three. When folks here, I know more than just a basic weave name. They want me going from their booth. Uh, that's kind of a bummer. I, uh, most of them have always been pretty good at least around here about that. Like I said, uh, just that one. Uh, Amanda's pretty good. She's normally pretty busy, so I have a hard time getting to really chat a lot with her. Uh, but her husband, I, he, he normally is working outside the booth. Uh, he'll, he's normally sitting down doing some stuff, and I chat with him a little more often just because he's a little less busy. But, uh, you know, I like, I like chatting with him. I like chatting with other mailers as much as possible. You know... I don't know if I necessarily know more than some of them. I've seen some other smaller places that I, I probably know more weaves than they do. But they were still good, you know. And then, you know, even at these other places, there's some weaves that they've got that I haven't seen before. And I'm like, what's the name of that weave? You know, I do. And, and it might be because I do end up buying something from them. And most of them have seen me for years and years coming around, you know. Uh, and so they're a little more open. 
than others, but, you know, I do. I try to chat with Chain Miller as much as possible. I'd like to travel and meet some of the other ones that are on, on our uh, Facebook groups that are out there. I'd love to go see Jennifer in person, see some of her stuff, and Lisa, David, uh, he doesn't really do events though, but he's up in Canada, does the other jerseys, kind of gave me the idea for my jersey, helped me with my first jersey actually. I'd love to just meet up and say hey to them, and even you. <laughs> Sundown right said I was looking to steal ideas. Yeah. I'd look at it, you know, if somebody wanted to come in and they were looking at something to try to steal an idea, it's like most of these are not, you know, they're fairly open. Uh, open weave, so they're not like, you know. And some of the other stuff maybe so, you know, like my lampshades and stuff, really nobody makes those. There's really no tutorials for a lampshade or anything, but it's basic weave, so. And there are some other things I like, even if I ask the name of it, you know. Sometimes, uh, while we're talking about that, they'll have another weave that they talk about the name of, and it's, I know what the real name of the weave is, but they name it something different. And that might be to try to throw you off track, but, you know, it's going to happen if people are really sitting there wanting to study something to, to steal an idea, but I'm like... I'd, I'd rather chain mail be more open and just kind of, you know. If you got your own uh, tutorial for something, I kind of get that in a way, but even like when I first was doing all this before I started the business, there were many things that I'd come up with that I I knew probably weren't, weren't something that I created, came up with, the first one to do it, blah, blah, blah. Somebody else I'm sure has, and that's why I didn't know names of a lot of weaves, and I just kind of gave my own name. But, I mean, when you play around with chainmail enough, you're going to start running across something that somebody else has created that's very close or almost identical. I mean, it's going to happen. So, I don't, you know. I will say they, they can drive me a little batty at times, too, but... Most of them, like I said, that I've run into around here have always been pretty good. I don't do colors, so nothing I would even make, but I hear mail or see a sign, it's got to see it, yeah, oh yeah. Even if it's kind of close, some people, you know, I've, I've actually run into a few people that didn't actually know they were making chain mail, they were just selling and doing some other jewelry and using jump rings and never uh, realized that it's a actual chain mail weave that they're working on. Uh, one of them was that they were actually doing Vincentine. And then they, they knew it was called Benzentine, but they didn't realize it was actually a chainmail weave. They just thought it was a jewelry weave. And uh, I ended up talking to them for a while, you know. They, uh, she was actually pretty nice about everything, and she actually ended up coming over to my booth and checking out some things and was like, yeah, that's, I didn't know this and that. And we chatted for a little while on that one. She was at that one event. She was there two two years in a row, and then I hadn't seen her since, which kind of sucked. But yeah, I always try to chat with as many chain mailers if I see them. All. I'm kind of a quiet guy, but when it comes to chain mail and somebody's working on something, you know, I love to sit there and chat with them if at all possible. If they want to be chattable, I'll be chattable. If I learn things, or you know, somebody asks me something about something I do, I'll be open with them and tell them, you know. Sometimes they might learn something too. Who knows? And I, I know I've had a few people come in that had to do chain mail. They're like, ah, oh, I used to do that, you know, back in the day. And, you know, they'll talk about working on a belt or something like that. And it's like, well, it's good to see you and chat with you and all that. So, uh, like my bracelet of TriStar Micro Bensity Web. Inside them, I know I'm not the first, but I have not seen a name for it. Yeah, yeah. There's a few little things here and there that I've done like that that I've never seen anybody else do. I've tried to look online, but if you don't have the proper name, you know, you could look for hours and hours and hours up on images of chainmail stuff. And like I said, that's why I've, I've seen a lot of stuff that way. And I'll, I'll save the picture of it. And 
not know the name of it and try to work on it. Sometimes I can fi find out what it is, sometimes I can't, but you know, I'll figure out how to put it together. drink here and been going well. Yep, we're an hour in, so that's good. Where are we at on our length here now? Oh, we're about six and a half-ish, probably closer to seven with a class. Because, uh, let's see, put that on there to be sideways, so I'll have to go one more to do that. So, just thinking out in the brain here. And, and like I was, I, I was saying last week, I think maybe uh, Amanda she she does these uh, uses the dog tags and, and and uses comic book clippings to cover them and uh, sells them dog tags with comic books and stuff on them, which I love them. They look so cool. Uh, and I do the same kind of process, but I end up using sheet music on mine. Uh, I mean, I could easily enough do that, but that's one of those things. That's her little thing. I don't want to kind of encroach on her, her, uh, comic book venture thing like that. So, I mean, I do try to be nice about it, but the over con overall concept I, I, I thought was kind of cool. I definitely build mine differently than they do theirs. Uh, I tried to do it the same way in a way that they did theirs, but I just didn't care for it, so I ended up going a different route and cover and seal mine up differently than they do. But I, I stay away from the comic book things just because out of respect in a way, you know. I could easy enough do it, but I don't do Comic Cons. They do a lot of Comic Con stuff. So I try to stay away from the comics on that aspect of things. Knowledge is free, skill to do the work is earned. I am more than happy to share how to hammer with knife. And the same knife, end of the day. Our mail is the same, more so when we make the rings. Yep, oh yeah, most definitely. You can give four or five chain mailers the same ring, same whatever sizes and all that and they would all do something a little different I guarantee you. <laughs> well, that ring got twisted back over and I'll pull you out aren't I? I didn't see you flip on me. You darn thing. I'm gonna get back behind there. There you go. And sometimes it might just be little things. I mean, there's a lot of weaves out there that are so similar, it's crazy. When you first get a quick glance at it, you're like, well, that's the same. Oh, no, it's not. You look a little closer. Sometimes it's just little variants. And I'll do that sometimes myself when I'm working on stuff just to kind of change it up. If I've done something so many times, it's like, hey, what can I do a little different here? What can I change this just, you know, to play? I don't try to be the first or plan to be the last, but inspire through showing once possible. Yep. You know, that's why I like watching other streamers too and and uh, just pictures on pictures upon pictures because you just, you know, sometimes something that they're doing gives you an idea. It's kind of like uh, Sean, how he's going to work that one piece of uh, full Persian and kind of do a, a thing. It gave me a group an idea of something I want to do that's in the basis similar but it's going to be totally different at the end so you know you never know when things will inspire you on this or that let's see here we're on three We might be able to get this finished up in the stream. I still got about 25 ish minutes or so. I don't know exactly how much more I'll need to do on this. Before I didn't pull out a class for anything for this tonight, I'd even pull out for smaller rings. I want to use some 3 16 to do my. I was thinking about putting a tube closure or a tube clasp on it, but. 
I, I honestly, I hate all these tube clasps I got because they're plated and uh, they just they change colors quickly enough, and the plating can wear off, and so I kind of hate them. I want to get some some of uh, Steampunk's Garage's uh, titanium cl uh, clasps and stuff because uh, they got some cool stuff there. Uh, oh, I need to do these first. <laughs> Almost five pounds clip to 12G, drills a bit warm, so giving it a break. Yeah, I even had my my uh, mandrel was getting hot on me when I was coiling up the bronze, which I have never actually had happen. Even on stainless steel, it never seemed to get that warm. It was it was kind of weird. Now normally I uh, yeah I've done that before too. Now it could have been just like I said with the drill. It would literally be smoking a little bit after after a, and I'm only using two put mandrels for on my rig for that. Uh, I want to get some longer ones and I want to build a bigger rig, but that's going to have to be when I get a good garage area going, so I got space to do it. But yeah, my mandrel was getting warm and I was have to give my mandrel a break. I was like, that was just weird. I mean, I know it gets it's gotten warm on the stainless, but it seemed like it got a lot warmer with the bronze. <laughs> kind of threw me out of my brain for a second when I started feeling it warming up like that. You seen Whitney new laser cut titanium? Uh, no, I haven't actually. I've seen some of uh, uh, Steampunk Garage's stuff. She uh, Jennifer's the keys and things that she's gotten all that stuff done, but I haven't seen any of Whitney's stuff. I wonder how I've missed that. I'll have to go look around tonight now. It's going to bug me now. <laughs> I'd love to be able to get something where I could cut out titanium stuff. That would be, you know, but you know, get a, I'd probably need some type of plasma cutter for that. And that's not a cheap piece of equipment. Never looked for the prices on them, but I've worked at a place where we did saw blades years ago, and I had a plasma cutter there to do that kind of work. And it was it was a fairly big machine to do what needed to be done, but it wasn't cheap either. <laughs> But I will say the last two weeks or so I've had a lot less time on looking on all my normal looks on Facebook. Uh, just with custom orders and uh, doing the band stuff, I've had a little less time to just kind of randomly go search and look around for some days I can spend a few hours just looking at pictures and seeing what people's posted and all that. And just haven't had a chance to do that as much here lately. Seem like the you know, my big time where I really can do that's January, February, where it's kind of the downtime for me for the most part, since most of the fairs are wrapped up. Everybody's done with Christmas stuff, and so that's the time of the year where I'll start kind of planning out the year, looking for new things to do, to try, and all that good stuff. So I'll definitely have to go to try to look at any of that stuff. Though I will say I've been kind of bummed here because I have gotten so used to I haven't seen Joshua or um, Sean's stream in weeks now and it's like there's a couple others that I catch here and there that I found on, on uh, YouTube but I did, can't seem to find them on Facebook and you know there's a few Wolf's Den, I think, but they're mostly doing videos. I guess there's been a few lives that I've watched on there. But they're kind of always at odder times for me to be able to watch it. So, I kind of got used to having Joshua's coming on, you know, my time about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I could just let it play while I'm working on some stuff. And then watching Sean's after mine, it's like, oh, I miss them so badly. See where we're at now. We gotta be getting closer. Should have waited here. That puts us. You know, I probably still need another good inch and a half, though. I would say approximately to get it close near eight. I guess I could try to put it around the, the sizer and kind of see where it's at that way. But I need to get out those other rings to put the, cl the clasp on it. 
I've seen some of the class you got those double ended uh, look like an S with the spring hooks on them. Those are cool, man. I I have never seen any like that before. I was like, I need to look those up. <laughs> I like them. I think they would work good for several different things that I've done. And not not a bad thing, you know. The bigger the clasp, the less you weave, right? <laughs> I know it sounds a little weird to say it like that, but I mean, there are some, you know, times that that works out good. Night, night size key rings? That's what those are called, the S hook thingies. I don't know, I thought they were really cool looking because I was like, I've never seen those. I've seen a lot of different stuff but you know i still run across stuff that i haven't seen before and it's like i, I like the look of that I, it, it, they look cool biggest thing is finding them again because i try not to use any plated stuff i got a lot of other clasps that i've bought through the years that i just don't ever use just because it's like yeah, i don't like this plated stuff i'm just you know i don't want to sell something to somebody that's going to start wearing off and, and you know maybe it'll last a year but you know more than likely you know some of the cheaper stuff like that that i bought myself at, at, for a piece uh, just end up wearing out too much too quickly wearing off their coatings or whatever and it just drives me nuts and that's why with my aluminum here my color aluminum I always had that thought in my head I'm like I just but after a few years of working with it and I've still got pieces that my wife that I made seven years ago I swear it doesn't even look like it looks like I built them last week now, that is after you give them a quick wash up with some soap and water, because some of them got a little dusty through the years, uh, just because of wearing out and, you know, going out to the Renaissance Festival is always a dusty event in itself. So. I like the double Uber loop dog style class, and then a 2 inch and loop, one third bracelet sometimes, yeah. I rather plastic to plated. <laughs> yeah, that is true. At least you know what you're getting with plastic, but that plated stuff, you know, I just, it, it just drives me nuts. And that's why I've, I've got a big old bunch of them there. And it's just, I just, I don't want to use them. They look good and everything like that, but I'm just afraid after a little bit of time what, what's going to happen to them. So it's like, yeah. I normally, well, actually, I used a good group of them. I used them to make some, uh, <laughs> quick hooks for the grill whenever I'm out there where I can hook up my wires and just run a wire, my temperature wire through it when I'm doing some smoking and stuff. And then a few others, because there's no hooks on my grill where I can hook on, you know, your, your spatula or your tongs or whatnot. And so I've made my own hooks and use that to hook them on. So they, they have gotten use, but I just, I'm, just don't want to put them into a piece to sell. sell. Larry piece best at buying 50 otherwise too well yeah most things I rather buy in bigger bulk anyway because I know I'm going to use them I mean that's I normally get my my stainless steel class so I'd get those at about 500 at each time and a group of 500 because they're just so much cheaper to buy them like that and I've already had a reorder and I'm actually getting close near on my larger ones I need to probably do another order for those Starla says wallets Ugh. No, her, her boyfriend wants me to make a chainmail wallet. He's been asking me for a while to work on one. and I want to sit down and try to see what I could do. But it's just, again, a matter of having time. And R&D is always so much more lengthy of time. And then you just don't know if, you're gonna, if it's going to work or not until you play around in it. I mean, I've got a few ideas on how to make it and what weaves I want to use. It is just a matter of sitting down and trying it and figuring it out. But yeah, every time he comes over, he's like, can you build this? Can you build that? <laughs> what was the last one he was talking about the other night? Uh, uh, making a cover for his, uh, what do they call it? Hoverboards. Yeah, they're not hoverboards, but I mean, that's what they call them. It doesn't hover, it's got wheels, but he wanted me to make some attachments for that too. I'm willing to try anything because you never know. Six and one patch, two patches, seam four and one. Kind of what I was thinking. Uh, depending on uh, right way or wrong way. 
I've got an idea for both ways. It's just a matter of sitting it down and again, like I said, just being able to do it when I can play around. And just this time of the year is just always more difficult to do so. At least on something, you know, these other bracelets, these new weaves that I've been doing is, they're kind of established, so I know that there's a definitely, I've had, I guess, three bracelets that I didn't like the way they went together, and they don't hold their place. They just don't quite work the way I'd want them to work that I want to play around with still, but again, that's R&D to try some different sizes, see if I can put in a, a different ring here or there to help everything stay more in place. I need to do that. Maybe in H P three and one, the edges, home, the other edge, leather lace. That's what I, I was I had to plan for using the leather. I've got uh well leather lace, I've got it in like sixteen different colors. I bought a bunch of big rolls of that so I could kinda because I do use them for some of my pendants. I we have people choice. Do you want to a, you can we can do a, a weaved chainmail weaved necklace we can put it on a ball chain necklace we can put it on faux leather uh, things and then I also got some wax cotton cord ones so I kind of give people the choice on what they want to have their piece hanging on so, you know some want it to be different so I try to have different stuff in events a lot of my pendant style things I don't even put anything on them it's like this is what it costs and then you can choose these this or this or this Them in place for the troublesome class welding them yeah. yeah okay did I not okay yeah I did didn't think I put on my other ring there so I guess actually let me go ahead and put on this one more and then I'm gonna grab some of my smaller rings and a clasp and see where I'm at and see if I need to add in any more or not I probably will have to, but the thing is, is I'm going to have to put two on each side because I want my class to lay the right way, and the way these end isn't the proper way for that. I need to put on two, so then I actually add on a little more. You know, just a regular lobster class, though, like I said. I thought about the, if I had some good tube class, I'd probably rather use a tube class on it, but I definitely need to get more I've got mm, four different types of class I got a couple toggle class that are okay uh, but I, I definitely need to get some more all right let's see here let me I'm gonna pull out rings from underneath here mm, my silver box oh. and three sixteenths 16 gauge. There's those. Oh, but I do need my empty. Oh, I can't reach them from here. Maybe. Ugh. I always put an empty in my hole when I take them out so that they don't start playing Jenga on me and I have to rearrange them all. <laughs> oh, I was trying. Well, at least if I'm going to put the box back anyway. Come on, get in there. And let's see. Clasps. Another thing, one clasp. As I've, I've got some silver clasps. I've got some magnetic clasps. I do have some powder coated ones and colors, but none of the colors really match up well with with uh, the shiny colors. I think they'll work better with the matte ones, but I've got quite a few of these that I haven't used yet either. Uh, I got a couple. I got some of these, the O style class. I, I love these, but I need to build some more stainless steel stuff to use those with, is what I planned on using them for. And I got my big stainless for wallet chains. I like these big beasts. I got these, big group of them a while back. I definitely like those. Better than the smaller, cheaper plated ones that I've gotten for sure. So I've got a, a buttload of these tube class that I thought about using on this, but 
like I said, they're just, they're just plated. I'm just afraid to put them in there. Probably not in video. <laughs> uh, I do have a small group of solid uh, or uh, sterling silver ones that I've used a few on, but again, the, the silver ones are just a little more, got to be a little more delicate with them, I guess. So. Uh. I didn't need to make titanium tube glass. They're powder coated. Those horseshoe style, you try welding ring straight to it like a tube glass. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've actually been playing around. I with the when I got this set up, I also I do some uh, wallet chains out of stainless steel bolts and or nuts, and uh, I was actually playing around with the pin welder. The other day, and I was I was just seeing it. Can I weld these nuts together? And I ended up welding a couple nuts together. Well, about seven, eight, and then I had some stainless steel washers. I started, to, so I, I should have probably made a creature out of it. But I was just welding them side by side just to see if I could get a, a, a good weld on them and playing around. So I could probably do my own a little bit better than some of these others that I've gotten. But you know. Uh, so one more, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Put one more on and then get the clasp on. It'd be better if, you know, you had multiple. And I thought about it. I've seen people use, you know, make these straight across instead of coming down to a point and then using two lobster clasps to close. And I thought about that too, but that can be kind of a pain sometimes, but... I will offer it to people, you know, if they want something totally custom, I'm willing to kind of get, I have gotten other clasp at times, uh, that somebody wanted something different, uh, they wanted, they asked for, you know, well, you've seen the dragon head clasp and stuff like that, you know, you let me know what you're looking for, I'll try to see if I can find it, <laughs> I've done that a couple times, and I'll let them know, you know. Being one-off type stuff like that, I normally don't order a bunch, but if you got something in mind and I can find it for you, you know, I just, you just pay the cost of what it takes to get it, and then, then we're good. We'll put it on there for you. Let's see here where this puts us. Come on, get up there. All right, well, I can just tell by the feel of it, probably about a seven and a half. Yeah, that's what I figured. I'm right at, almost at the seven and just a little over eight, so I'm right at about seven and a half. That's what I figured. I got a little used to being able to tell what size it is just by putting my hand to kind of know the feel after so many years. So we'll take that off. We'll add a few more on to it. What time are we running now? We're in an hour 22. I guess maybe I'll... Do that after the stream. I did want to pull out the bow tie. Those all still need to show it off next uh, Monday for the stream since I finished it up. But I ended up getting the uh, getting the clasp on the back so you can do it. And I, I ended up using the ring hold, holes to put it on there. But you can bend it up and get it attached, and then it just pops back into place and bow tie you go. I mean, it's kind of a simpler bow tie. Uh, I want to try to put the same clasp on another style. The more of the loopy one that I have. Bow tie. And after doing this one, I might still take my center off of this and go with bigger rings. Uh, just because that's what I've done on the other one. I want to try a smaller version. And this works out okay. It didn't come out bad. But it, a little more stretchy than I would like. I want the elephant head like the dragon and wolf. That'd be cool. Now there's a bunch of them I would love to have, but they're just so much more expensive. And I like to, you know, I hate getting one or two of anything. Just because it's like, I'm going to love it. And then I want to get more anyway. <laughs> so you got to find the right price, the right place, all that. But, so that, it, it ended up coming out pretty good. I was kind of happy with the way that that ended up working. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm not sure what I did with the other. And it's kind of like all the, the, the little wings and feathers. I got a ton of the ton of the feathers. Uh, I don't even remember how many I bought at one point in time. I probably used about half of them so far. But a heavy little bunch. I use them on quite a few things as just little quick dangles. Uh, I saw a lot of just quick earrings with those on there. Seems people really like the feathers. I want to work them into some turquoise styled colored things too. I think those would go well for the people that are into the, the turquoise and stuff. Alright. So, we're getting pretty close here. I think we're probably going to go ahead and call her done for the night. Finish this up real quick afterwards. Add on another few rows. Get it ready and uh, then uh, and then you start getting everything out and ready to do the chessboard tomorrow. Probably want to get a little bit done tonight. Got some other things to do tomorrow, so I probably won't get much of a chance before the stream tomorrow night. 14G, Baby Blue, Niobium, Benzentine Chain, with two elephant heads, connecting with large golf ball pink ports. Cameo is my desire. Sweet. That does sound pretty cool. I want to start getting into some of those, too. Uh, I haven't done a whole lot of uh, 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 work with adding extras when it comes to like the 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 what I don't even know how they pronounce that word. You find out quickly. I don't know how to pronounce a lot of words. I can read the word, but pronouncing it because I'll pronounce it in my head oddly, but I know what it means. Cabochets <laughs> uh, caber, or whatever. Uh, I've done a few. Uh, but it's a matter of finding the right one. Some of the things that I've seen is just like, that would be kind of hard to wrap, or some of them I'm afraid that I'm going to, to really capture it in there, you're going to take away from the piece itself because of how you're going to have to capture it. So it's like, eh, I put them off. I put them off. I've done a few, and I do like them, but just not necessarily my forte. Maybe one day. Add it to the list of everything else. <laughs> but... I think we're going to go ahead and call it quits for tonight. Stream, we'll be back again tomorrow night. Uh, working on the chest, chest board. Uh, and like I said, I'll finish this up tonight. And we'll show some pictures of it, hopefully tomorrow night. Then I'll pull it out, kind of like I did Monday night's thing. I was going to try to hold off, but it was like, I'm almost to the end. I just want to finish it. So probably would have finished it during the stream Monday night, but I had to cut, cut it. We got to an hour, and it was like, oh, I had to go to the bathroom. I, I couldn't hold the PP anymore, so I had to go. <laughs> and I didn't want to leave the stream just sitting here. If I had some music background, maybe. Something I was actually looking at earlier today, but I only spent about an hour looking into it because I was like, too many things, too many things. The focus of the focal point piece. Looking at the frame game group. I might have to do that. Because I, I, like I said, I've done a few. I've sold a few, but it just hasn't been something that really because sometimes getting into wrapping some of that stuff can can take a little longer than i like to try just because you know i hate putting in wasted time on a price on my piece because if i have a screw up i don't put in screw up times or anything like that so but anyway we're going to go ahead and call it quits tonight we will be back tomorrow night at 7 30 again central time whatever time that is for you it's 7 30 my time central and uh so I hope you all have a great night, and uh, we'll see you with tomorrow, hopefully. So you all have a great Wednesday night, and we'll see you Thursday.